Uh, hi everyone. Uh, good evening. So going to take about the pink training on pink fabric. So basically, like uh, uh, having the experience of difference in pink fabric and uh, basically like a pink products of pink fabric as well as the pink directory on Delta. So with respect to your pink fabric, I also having working experience in implementation development and. Uh, like even training experience on pink thread. So I also uh, took training in pink thread as well as the pink directory or uh, for the corporate as well as the retail uh, retail and then some consultancies also with uh, like a private consultancies. And then like I also like for the past two, two and a half years, like two and two and a half years, I was uh, taking uh, training for the corporate as well as the retail industries. And then uh, with respect to the pink thread and then the uh, pink directory. So my primary expertise is the pink ferret and then the pink directory for the LDAP. And then I also completed my pink ferret certified professional uh, course so that uh, then only I started uh, like to, taking training for the people section. And then uh, with respect to pink ferret, so I work in implementation, installation, upgrade, and development, and uh, like normal uh, like configuring SP connections as well as the SAML as well as the OAuth and OpenID configurations. With respect to your pin directory, I also work in installation, implementation, and development of pin directory with uh, with the ping data sync uh, configurations also, and then replication of uh, pin directory servers also. And then uh, yeah, so so we are from Mind Magic. So this is like uh, I mean Mind my Mind Magic's taking the ping per right uh, uh, training for you guys. Okay. So here about the demo class, I will be explaining about the course content and then what are the prerequisites of the training. And then I will explain you about what are the overview of the pink ferret consult and what are the contents we are going to see it in the pink ferret consult basically. Okay, so here in the course outline, okay, so this is just a normal course outline where we'll be providing uh, providing for the students. And then, but apart from this, like each, inside the, each module, we'll have a, a detailed and every kind of a theoretical as well as the practical kind of a theoretical as well as the practical kind of a training will be there. So nearly like 10 to 20 percentage will be like the theoretical and then remaining 80 to 90 percentage will be purely practical session only because Pink Fair requires most of the things uh, can be able to understand only with the practical kind of uh, experience. So here, apart from this Pink Federate configuration also, I will also show how to do the Delta basics. Okay. So I mean, uh, if you ignore this course outline, okay. Apart from this, we'll also explaining about the uh, LDAP basics, like how to install a LDAP, so that because uh, Pink Parent is basically like doing the authentication for the user. So for authentication, we require like to create a user and to create a password for a particular user. So I will be tell, I will be explaining you how to install a, some kind of a open source LDAP. Might be like a Pink directory, or it may be like a, any kind of open source LDAP, basically. So with respect of the, I mean, we, I'll also show, show them how to configure a users and how to create a users and then password. Apart from that, I will also explain them, explain them the LDAP basis, how the LDAP has been working with the pin credit and how to establish a communication between the pin credit and then the LDAP and somewhat like working of LDAP, how the basics of LDAP, which is like a direct information tree, the tree structure of the LDAP and then like domain controller, like just a basic introduction about the LDAP. Now, coming into the course outline, we'll, I mean, at the starting of the class, we'll go with the introduction of the identity and access function. So basically, just a uh, just an introduction about the identity and access function because we don't know whether the uh, candidate will be like a, a fresher, uh, new to the identity and access function. Some candidates will be like, uh, uh, like in, I mean, they will be uh, they will have some experience with the identity and access function, but not with the pink right tool basically. So yeah, for both of them, so uh, I mean, for both of those candidates, I will mean, take a normal introduction about the identity and access management. What is an identity and access management, and then. Like we'll start with the pin credit, why we are using the pin credit and what is the difference between the pin credit and other identity and access management tool, like basically like authentication tool. <clears throat> and then we'll start with the, what are the protocols available in the pin credit. So there are like basically like two to three protocols. There is a SAML, OAuth and OpenID. So we'll just uh, giving a normal introduction about, so these are the protocols are available in the uh, pin credit, right? And then, so we are going to see about each and every protocol one by one with the theoretical as well as the practical session. And then uh, we'll start with the uh, first of all in the first class it's a uh, it's like a normal introduction basically. So once after the introduction and the introduction about the pink ferret tool, 
then only we'll start with the prerequisite of the pin thread. So there are like some kind of a prerequisite while we will be doing it in the uh, uh, direct class itself. Like because for example, if I want to uh, install a pin thread, it means we need the Java. Basically, like uh, pin thread is uh, based on a Java kind of a module only. So in order to work, I mean, in order to uh, make the pin thread to work or install in some machines, with Java is the first prerequisite we need to be installed. So I will, uh, I mean, I will explain them how to install the Java and how to set up the Java parts in our machines. Then only we can start installing the pin thread. So basically, like uh, the first class will be purely based on the uh, introduction about the tool, introduction about the identity and access management, and then we'll uh, uh, introduction about in how to install the pin thread, how to get the license fact, how to get the software for the pink credit so that they can also go ahead and install their in i mean install the pink credit on their machines also and then they can also get the license file for 30 days so they can use it on their machines also and they do work on it i mean in the next session we will be working with the ldap basically so how to install the ldap and then like how the working of the ldap is there like a ldap basics and then we'll continue with the <coughs> creating a users and then like how to i mean how to make a communication between the Pink Federate and then the LDAP. So, and then I will also explain the, uh, explain the candidates about the what are the components are available in the Pink Federate. Basically, like a lot of components, a lot of new components are there. I mean, with even the SAML and OAuth and OpenID, those are all like a common protocol for every identity and access management tool. But every, the, what is Pink Federate is different from other tools, maybe the components which they are using it inside the console. So, each and every components, why they are using it and then what, uh, why they are using it, why we are using it in that particular style instead of directly authenticating the users and then how we are authenticating the user how how the authentication is happening in the back end so every component we will be explaining in the theoretical part and then as well as the the next session once we uh, once we completed the theoretical part of uh, of the pink credit components are and then the components available in the pink credit we'll go with the practical session of the not with the practical directly like we'll, in, like sample like means there are like two kind of a protocols will be there so two kind of a workflows will be there. So we'll explain theoretically what is this workflow, what is that workflow, and then once it is completely done, we'll go with the we'll go with the working of SAML, and then we will start with the SAML configuration. So SAML configuration. Once we completed the whole SAML configuration, okay, I'll also show them how the single sign-on works as well as how the single logout also works actually. So basically, I will be showing them for an example of a Salesforce connection. So as a ESP initiated as well, so how the Salesforce, I mean, how the application side configuration will be there, how the pink pair side configuration will be there. So there will be like two different kind of an administrator user interface will be there. So I will show them this is the configuration will be there in the pink pair and this is the configuration will be there in the Salesforce basically. So that will cover the SAML IDP initiated as well, as well as the ESP initiated as well. And then it will also cover the single logout also. And then in the meantime, because if, even when you are going to enable the single logout, it will also require the certificate to be configured. So I will also explain them what are the types of certificates available in the pink card, right? Okay, basically like I mean, there are like a lot of types of certificates, basically like a signing certificate or encryption certificate or like a SSL server certificates, LDAP certificates, which we will be using it okay to enable the 636 port. So all types of certificates I will be explaining and then how to import those certificates in the module in the pink thread so that we can able to enable the trust between both of the parties once we completed the SAML part, SAML part we will start with the other kind of a feature so that is not coming and post out so it will be like an additional kind of add-on topics basically so add-on topics is nothing but it's kind of I mean apart from the yeah apart from the normal SAML OAuth and OpenID or like a multi-factor authentication or like a, a pink credit configuration or metadata and clustering. So apart from those, uh, I will also cover this SMTP server configuration and then like a pin direct. So uh, obviously, like as a Yelta, we will go with the pin direct feature. So that is an easiest way to do that for us, easiest to understand the Yelta actually. And then like we are having in the pin credit, we are having a SMTP. That is a, a notification publisher. So that for example, we are having one kind of option in pin credit to. Uh, like reset the password and forget password option, we can able to enable it in the pin credit. So that kind of option, I can show them how to do, how to configure SMTP so that uh, like if the user uh, forgot their uh, password means they can able to reset their password by sending a mail from the pin credit to the user's mail address. And then I can also show them how to change the password. And then we can also enable the registration page for the pin credit so that uh, we can self-registration. Basically, in pin credit, self-registration also it is supported. So I will also explain them how to register, do the self-registration for that. This kind of a, it's an add-on topic, but it will hold much value in the 
ping fed rate uh, concepts in the future, basically. So apart from that, uh, we'll cover with the ping uh, metadata and then like a multi-factor authentication for the ping fed rate. So multi-factor authentication also it will cover more kind of a, more kind of a weightage basically. Multi-factor authentication means with respect to of the do MFA, I will show them as a practical session. And then once we complete the MFA, and then uh, we will start with the selectors, policies, and adapters. Like, well, these are the basic modules we will be covering with the SAML as well as the what, like policy contracts, and then the adapters, and then the uh, like the policy selectors, how to make the selectors, how to configure the selectors, like different types of selectors, different types of adapters. So, uh, I mean, in the adapter section, we will be seeing the multi factor adapter also, and then different kinds of uh, policies we will be configuring it in the configuration in the ping factor. So once we completed all the things, so this should be like uh, we will be going with the open ID as well as the open ID as well as the OAuth configuration. So basically, like OAuth and open ID configuration will be like done as a combination, basically. So that means like we will be using it as a we will be configuring using both of them as a like in a combined method, basically. Okay. So that means like uh, while configuring the OAuth, like different types of grant types are there. Okay. And then like that is the workflows we will be going to use it. So that different kind of a grant types that is different kinds of a grant types that is a workflow we are going to see it like our authorization code grant type as well as the like the authorization code grant type with the implicit grant type and then client credentials and resource owner. I will also explain them how to configure it and then how to uh, theoretically I will explain them how, what is the workflow and then what is the difference between all the four grant types and then I will also start uh, explaining about them what we can say that uh, explaining about that uh, what are the APs has been used for each grant type so that uh, they can also understand it. Okay, so this is the API which is used to create a token or this is the API to get the validate the token or refresh the token or like a lot of concepts are available in the world. We'll cover every kind of APs which has been used in the pin fed right for the OAuth configuration and then like all the four grant types as I mentioned and then like how to test these kind of APs. So we need some kind of a tool to uh, do it. So I will also explain how to download that tool and then how to do the postman and then how to test the test those kind of a APIs basically for the OAuth configuration as well as the open ID configuration. Okay. Once we complete the OAuth, so there is a new kind of a concept that is the authorization code granted with the PKC method. So I will also explain them what is the difference between the normal authorization code granted and then the authorization code granted with the PKC method. So and then I will also show them how to configure it and then we will also have a practical session for that. Authorization code. So here, whatever the course outline are there, everything will have a theoretical as well as the concept, I mean practical session. So mostly all the all the modules will have a practical session only, not like a theoretical session, it will be like a less session. And then we'll once we've completed the OAuth and open ID and security token and everything, we'll go for a clustering. So pink credit clustering means that is totally like a uh, I mean like how to enable a clustering in a same kind of a mission and then different kind of a mission, how to configure that. And what are the changes we will be doing it in the back end? So we'll cover those kind of things, uh, those kind of options, and then we'll uh, in the last module we will go with the information for the logs. Actually. Okay, so what are the logs we are getting in the back end, and how to get those logs, and then like how to see those logs, validate those logs, and then how to troubleshoot some kind of issues in the back end. Okay, so if the user is facing some kind of issues, how can we troubleshoot those kind of issues in the Back end log by using the back end logs. So, overall, this is like a total kind of an outline. It's just, just an outline, but e under this, each module, there are like different, different kinds of a topics will be embedded into this one. For example, if you take a OAuth, means there are like four different types of uh, grant types are there, and under those grant types, you will see a lot of, uh, I mean, for example, if it is, if you if we, if we take an operation code grant, I means the first token concept will be there, uh, PKC method will be there, and then Token validation will be there, revocation will be there. Okay, so a lot of things will be in, embedded into the single topic itself. So if you take a multi factor authentication, the, there are like a lot of, uh, I mean, there are like even in the multi factor authentication itself, we can do it in a two different ways. I will also explain them how to do it in the two, both the ways basically. So apart from that, like add on topics is nothing but we can go with the like uh, SMTP server means like this is like a notification publisher uh, that we will be configuring in the pin factory. Right? And then ping directly as an LDAP, and then like forgot option, password option. And then apart from this, there will be like additional, uh, like add on topics will be like, for example, uh, how to configure the OGNL expression in the, for example, like most of the applications, they will be asking like uh, a custom kind of attributes to be said in the SAML response or in the OAuth access token. For them also, 
we, I, they need, we, we need to write a code actually, basically like a Java code. I will also show them, okay, so these are the code we will be using it. Like some kind of, a, what we can say, some kind of, a, some kind of a, like, uh, like predefined codes are they? So I will also explain them, okay, predefined some kind of a, like the use cases are there. I will also explain what are those use cases and when those kind of use cases require. Now, next one is that, okay, we will go with the projects. So one project we will be for the salmon, one project for the OR, and then we'll have, I will also show them some kind of, a, I will also give them some kind of hands-on also. So that hands-on will be like a day-to-day -day activities, like for example, whatever the, whatever the hands-on, whatever the hands-on I'm giving it. For example, if I finish the salmon means, I'll also ask them to like, to create like one or two connections on their own and then, then come back with the, any doubts if they are having it, okay? Apart from these projects, so these are a project one with the sales source for the sample configuration and then API testing for the OAuth basically. API testing means all the grant types will be included and then sales source means it's, a, it's for the sample con. So now these are the lab setup we will be having it, okay? So for Windows, I mean, we, we go in the Windows machines, okay? Anything more than our like Windows 7, basically like nowadays we are having Windows. So for that, and then like uh, 500 GB, that is more than enough 500 GB. And then memory means, uh, even 8 GB is also fine actually, we don't need the 16 GB RAM set, 8 GB is fine, okay? Even 16 GB is not that much required, okay? And then basically we need the high-speed internet, and then before that, uh, one more, a lot of other prerequisites are there, I will, but I will explain them in the direct class itself actually, like how to download the software, and then how to download the Java, and then how to set up the environment variables for the Java basically. Apart from this, I will take you some kind of a, some kind of a topic. Okay, I will go through the console basically as a demo session. Okay, so this is like a, a console we will be having it for the pink credit. So this kind of a console after installation, the candidate can able to see this console actually. This is a, like an overview of a pink credit console. So I will be installing the pink credit latest version, that is 11 version actually basically. So that will have all the bugs as been resolved in this particular version. So that's why. And then, so basically, if you go to the security, so we will be having the signing certificate piece here, okay? Like all the signing certificates, and then, for example, in order to sign the sample response, okay, we will be using this signing certificate to perform the signing activity. And then, like, trust us here. So we will be using, like, configuring the uh, LDAP certificate, basically, here. LDAP certificate, which is used to upload, I mean, which is used for the directory authentication, basically. Like, for example, if I want to authenticate the user, on 389 port means we don't need the certificate. But if, it is, if I want to do it in a 636 port, I need the certificate to do that. So in order to establish a trust between the uh, pin credit and then the Elta, which are, we have installed, right? So we will need to upload the certificate in the security. That is a process here. Okay. So here, in order to secure this certificate, I mean, in order to secure the server side, actually, that is like a server, I mean, it's like a SSL server certificate. Okay, we need to upload the certificate here in the SSL server. Okay, so this will be the certificate. Okay, this is basically like a sales sign certificate which will be used for a, like what we can say, like for a normal kind of a training purposes. But if it is in a, like real-time environment means, we will be installing the trusted certificate authority, I mean, any kind of a third party uh, certificate authority issued certificates basically, okay. Apart from that, okay, so system. The most important step, the add-on course will be the notification publisher which we are having it. Okay, I will be showing them how to, like how to configure a, like a SMTP server. Basically, like this SMTP server, we can able to use the Gmail, okay. For example, in Gmail, we can able to use use the Gmail as a free source. Actually. Like other SMTP servers are there, like AWS SMTP is there. Um, like even a lot of Microsoft is also having one thing, okay. So, but, but, uh, but that, those are all like, even Office is different. that is the one Microsoft, okay. But that's all like, a, like it's not a freeware actually, but we can use the Gmail as a free SMTP server. So that like any, uh, we can use some kind of a dummy email address. So from that email address, we can able to send the mail to the uh, concern, I mean, like mail to the, for example, for other password or reset password, we can able to do it. So apart from that, this is the data store we will be using it, okay? So the data store where we will be connecting the ping directory, uh, ping directory or any other LDAP basically. We can connect to the active directory or LDAP or open DJ, any open social DAPs or legalized version of any LDAP we can able to connect to it, okay? So this is where we will be giving the port number. So here we, I have given the uh, 636 port, basically like a secure port. So that is why I need to go here and then add that same kind of certificate here. So then only the pin finder we can able to trust this one. Okay, so for example, if I if I remove that uh, certificate means it won't it won't be able to connect to the 
pin fed, right? Uh, sorry, pin, uh, that is a yield up basically. And then this is the PCV where we will be uh, where, where we will be connecting the direct data store which we have created in the previous step. We will be connecting that one here so that uh, uh, the users can able to log in with the uh, the users can start logging with the particular data store, particular that particular data store. So that the user can do the authentication and then the password. Okay. So if I go for the IDP adapters, where we will be containing a lot of IDP adapters, basically like a HTML form adapter, different kinds of adapter, like a MFA adapter and then the HTML adapter. And then like uh, HTML adapter means it will throw the login page to the user. So yeah, I can show them. Oh, sorry, it's going for a basic adapter. Okay, so this is like a, a HTML adapter with the customization. So here I will also show them how to customize this kind of a Login page also. So this is like a customized adapter basically. Okay, I can also show them how to customize this one. And then if I click on the register now, okay, so this is the basic registration. I will show them how to create this kind of a registration page in the ping fed, right? Okay. So apart from that, these are the SAML connections. I will show them how to configure the SAML connections with the Salesforce and other test connections. And then if you for our client ID, I will also show them the optician port grant type client credentials. Implicit grant type ROPC and then token validation grant type also. And then with authorization code grant type, I will also show them reference token and then as well as the PKC method that is known as the proof key for code exchange method also. Okay. And then with respect to the selectors, I will also show them these are the selectors which are available in the pin credit. So these are the selectors I will be configuring in. So here, here itself, uh, we will be configuring different kind of a selector. For example, if you take a CIDR selector, means this is the IP range selector where we will be giving the IP ranges so that, for example, if the particular application coming from this IP range just means it will take it as a yes or else it will take it as a no, basically. Okay. So this is one of the selectors. So there are many eight kind of a different kind of a selectors are there. I will show them how to, uh, what are the use cases of, the, of each kind of selector. For example, connection set authentication selector, basically, uh, it will, uh, we will be adding some sample configurations here. If you see it in there, we can able to add some configurations. So if, if it is yes means, it will take it as a, I mean, if you are trying to access the connection, particular application means, it will take it as a yes, or else if you are trying from any other application means, it will take it as a no, basically. Now, for the, these are the SAML actually. If you take it as a connection or HTTP header or request parameter means, these are the SAML selector which was not used for the OAuth. So if I want to use the OAuth selector means, OAuth only selector means, it's a OAuth client selector, OAuth script selector, and then request opt-in selector specially. These are the selectors which will be available for the OAuth. Okay, well, this is the client means we can able to add the client ID here so that if the uh, request coming from this particular client ID means, it will take it as a yes. Or else it will take it as a no in the policy. Okay, so this this OAuth client ID only applicable for operation code grant type, and then the inclusion grant type not applicable for any other selector. Uh, sorry, any other grant type basically only working for these policies and this policy which you are using it, right? These are the policy tree. I will I will show them how to do this. Basically, this policy like uh, it's a if else condition. If we will be providing the condition. So that is uh, basically the, this whole policy itself. It's a if else kind, if else kind of a condition in the Java, basically. Okay. So if we will be providing the condition, so that condition we will be giving in the selector, basically. Okay. If that condition satisfied, it will take that yes. For example, if you go here, okay. So here, if this selector, I mean, if the selector is satisfied, this condition means it will take that yes. I will show them how to. It will go to the yes, and then like HTML adapter. If it is no, means it will go to the different adapter. Basically, we can we can uh, create whatever we want. Basically, it's a uh, it's purely for uh, whatever our convenience only. We can we can create as our for our understanding purpose. So as much as policy, we can able to create it. Okay, but whenever the application comes inside the policy, it will start from the first one itself. That is, it will start from the sequence number one. Then it will check this condition. If the condition is failed, means it will go to the second. And then it will go to the third, fourth, like that. If the first condition itself satisfied, means the first policy itself it will get triggered for that particular user and then the application basically. So here, this is the local identity profile where we will be creating a registration page for the users basically. Okay, so this is where we will be creating a registration page. I will also show them how to, register, how to do this one. What are the components here? Pre-request for this particular registration page, uh, registration page basically. Okay. Yeah, apart from that, these are the access token mappings. We, okay, so here in SAML configuration, everything will be we will be doing it in a single kind of a application. But in OAuth, that single pane will be differentiated into four different components. That is known as the access token management, access token mappings, open ID policy management, and then the OAuth client ID. Okay, 
So basically, like in order to create a OAuth client ID with, uh, uh, for example, if I try to hit this particular client ID image, okay, it will come inside this one, and then it will get, it will go and check here which open ID policy has been configured. Then it will go to the open ID and see if this open ID policy is there or not. If it is there, it will go inside that particular policy and then see which kind of a token manager has been used. Again, it will go to that particular token manager and see the token manager, and then it will go here and which kind of a policy contract or adapter has been used. If it is the adapter or policy contract, it will go here and then choose the, I mean, this kind of a page, it will come actually. Basically, like it will throw the login page for the user. The user will type the credentials. Then once it is typed the credentials, it will get all the attributes here and then it will create access token and it will redirect to the open ID policy and then it will assign all the attributes and then it will send the access token to the particular, uh, I mean, but that is a particular user means it's a application side. So then application will uh, resource server will do the uh, validating the access token and it will they will give the access to the user basically. So in order to download the metadata, we can able to export it the metadata from the console itself. Okay, we can create a dummy configuration and then we can download the metadata and share it with the application team for the SAML basically thing. Yeah, general settings. Yeah, this is where we will be configuring the base URL and then the SAML entity ID for the particular ping fed identity provider, okay? So we can also change the identity ID, but uh, this is recommended. We, we should not change the identity ID in, in middle of maybe like 100 connections or 50 connections, okay? Even one connection also, we should not change the entity ID basically, okay? So this entity ID, we should not change it and uh, it should be static for all through the every application. So after the completion of course, we will do some kind of a question Q and A sessions where we will be asking some uh, questions related to the Ping fair rate, whether to check the uh, knowledge of the uh, candidates, whether there is, is there any kind of a gap is between the uh, training as well and then understanding the concept question. And then after that, we'll also provide the certifications within like this actually, okay, post completion certificate basically, okay. Thank you so much guys for uh, under, um, attending this demo session. So it's, uh, it's been a good opportunity for me to uh, like taking a training and demo for you guys on the trusted job of Ping fair rate, okay. So if you are having any kind of a queries, you can reach out to this mail address and then the uh, contact number. So, so thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for uh, this demo session. Okay, we'll see you in the real time. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys.